In the era of combating rapid climate change, we as individuals are now responsible for reducing our carbon footprint and other environmental impacts of our chosen actions in our everyday life. Our diet is a major aspect of it as our global food system is responsible for one-fourth to one-third of all greenhouse gas emissions today. But food isn't optional. We gotta eat. So we need to choose the most nutritious foods that have the least environmental impact. And by now, we all know that meat and dairy are getting the worst press. In particular, we've seen beef getting slashed all over recently because cows are basically burping fart machines. So along with the rising vegan movement around the world, we're told that a plant-based diet is the solution. But is it really the case? Because popular foods like avocados, soy, almonds, and more do cause massive environmental destruction. And let's not forget the mass transportation of those foods across the globe. So this raises the question, how can eating those regional plant foods be less damaging than eating organically and locally produced meat and dairy? Let's find out the answer using data that constructs life cycle assessments, meaning the environmental impact of an item from its production all the way to the shelf. So, in the previous video, I explained and compared the environmental impacts of our diets, focused from a wider scope with greenhouse gas emissions, land use change, water use, organic or grass-fed, holistic management or regenerative farming, etc. And of course, specific plant foods. But I realized how controversial our, or I should say, vegan's consumption of avocado, soy and nuts, and it deserves its own separate video. Make sure to watch the previous video for the full story. Alright, let's get right in. Now, let's talk about what every everyone likes to talk about. Buying local is the most responsible and effective solution. Surely nothing can be more destructive than shipping of avocados for vegans across the planet, right? Well, you're about to be shocked at what I'm about to say. If we look at the life cycle assessment, one kilogram of Mexican avocado shipped all the way to the UK produces around three kilograms of CO2 equivalent, whereas one kilogram of locally produced ruminant meat or milk product transported from a local farm to a local butcher to your local store produces 20 kilograms of CO2 equivalent at least. What? How can this be true? The reason for this is not only that freight shipping is incredibly efficient compared to road transportation, but also that transport accounts for less than 10% for most foods. And when it comes to beef, it can be as low as 0.5% of its total emissions. For the controversial avocados, it is 8%, which is significantly higher than that of beef. Are things not adding up? Well, to sum it up, the problem with food-related greenhouse gas emissions is the production of food itself. Here, the pink represents transport, and if I'm right, you had to look for the pink. Yes, buying local is best if you can, but this can be delusive since replacing red meat and dairy with plant-based foods just one day per week can achieve the same result as eating a diet with zero food miles, which is practically impossible to achieve even if you shopped completely local. Therefore, what matters is not where, but what. Plus, we know that Amazon deforestation is largely driven by cattle ranching, 80% to be exact according to Yale's Global Forest Atlas, and more by the massive expansion of soy farming, and 75% of the soy is used to feed livestock around the globe, and only around 6% for all humans. So if you live in the US, there is a good chance you're eating Amazon deforestation and slavery beef. And according to new scientists, in Europe and UK, you're most likely eating that and locally farmed animals raised with Brazilian soy contaminated with deforestation. Plus, it is important to note that the standard fishing practice of bottom trolling alone releases as much emissions as the entire aviation industry. And after all, animal agriculture's total emissions are slightly greater than the combined exhaust from the entire transportation sector altogether. We love to call out vegans for eating tons of avocado toast. A medium-sized avocado has a carbon footprint of about 420 grams, which is a lot. But is smaller than a cup of coffee with milk that everyone loves and their water footprints are about equal. So my question is, how many avocados does an average vegan eat for every cup of coffee you drink? Let's do some math. 44% of average American coffee drinkers drink 2 to 3 cups of coffee per day. Then a vegan has to eat 3.3 avocados per day to compete with the carbon footprint of 2.5 cups of regular latte. Now, if they eat a 3 ounce steak once a week, the vegan now has to eat eat 4 a day, or at least 30 of the fruit that they're blamed for consuming a week. Keep in mind, I'm being very conservative with this calculation, as I entirely excluded the methane, and it's not even the most impactful beef. So the highest estimate could be as many as 42 avocados per week. 
Avocados cannot be our main concern nor an argument against the plant-based diet specifically, considering they are not required for us to be healthy. It's not a vegan issue, it's an avocado issue. But why address avocados before beef? Yes, there's no doubt that avocados are environmentally damaging, but it does not make any sense to justify regularly consuming foods, meat and dairy that are much more damaging than that instead. If you want to make the most responsible choice possible, it should be more natural for you to try to eat a locally sourced plant-based diet without avocados. You might want to reduce your coffee consumption as well. Nuts in general are highly water intensive. In fact, they take more blue water than any animal-based food. So this is something that needs to be addressed. Maybe we should reduce our nut consumption. But it's worth asking, what would happen if we replaced our consumption of dairy with almonds for our calcium intake? Because almond milk contains more more calcium and many other vitamins by volume. First, 80% of the world's almonds are produced in California, whereas the state produces less than a fifth of all US milk. But still, if we look at the water use in the state, the feed that's fed to dairy cows takes significantly more blue water to produce than almonds in the first place. The study which the earlier chart comes from says, replacing all meat by an equivalent amount of crop products such as pulses and nuts will result in a 30% reduction of the food related a water footprint of the average American citizen. So yes, even though almonds are highly regional and water intensive, we could produce and get more calcium using less water and land, emitting less greenhouse gases, and causing less eutrophication by choosing almonds over dairy. In fact, many nut producers are even carbon negative and land use change negative. And if you don't need as much calcium, you can save even more water by choosing oat or soy milk latte over almond milk latte. Either way, dairy, which is outstandingly the worst in every category, shouldn't be an option. Even if we magically stopped global warming, we wouldn't be able to protect humanity and the planet. Without combating world hunger and human rights crisis, public health issues including zoonotic diseases and antibiotic resistance, air and water pollution, habitat destruction, species extinction, and other environmental threats that are induced by our modern global food system. The point of this video is not to say that current plant agriculture culture is ideal. It is nowhere near it. Massive amounts of fertilizers and chemicals used are a problem to tackle. Highly processed foods are an issue in most forms of modern diets, and our food system requires substantial policy changes and improvement. Vegan or non-vegan, we cannot entirely eliminate our impacts on the planet and other living beings. So the takeaway is that it is always important to look at the full picture and that there is always a better choice. Although veganism, either as an ethical philosophy or life lifestyle in a holistic sense is never enough to save the world. As of now, it seems to be one of the most logical solutions.